I feel like I met you in my life at a time whereby I needed you the most mm. because I think it took your presence to melt my heart. Baby, I'm grateful to be alive, counting all my blessings, and I'm learning every day not to take things for granted. You know, last night I had a beautiful sleep, mm -hmm. and I felt pretty much well rested. Thank you for asking. How are you, my gorgeous queen? <laughs> I'm good, Tanasam. I'm doing well, my love. And let's welcome our family members. Welcome to the Thinker Circle. It's a girl queen, the one and the only pretty, of course. And today, as you can see, I have my partner, Upud Marlisa, Zolisa Nomandla. <laughs> Stock sits a banana boy. <laughs> <laughs> And please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share this video. And to, re to the returning subscribers, of course, welcome back, guys. And without wasting time, baby, let's just get into this video. Let's go! <laughs> so today, we're talking about something very personal. And the topic, as you can see from the title of the video, I fell in love with the man that had a hard heart. So this topic is going to be very interesting today. <laughs> Baby, do you want me to just go on or you want to start? I am interested in the direction you're going to take. So please proceed. <laughs> 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 Let me drink first. I'm on the one. So, I'm nervous a little bit. Why are you nervous? I don't know. Yeah, it's too much nervous. So you can ban. So go you can ban. Anyway, um, as you guys know that we met. When did we meet? 2016. Yeah, it's almost five years. <laughs> we met in 2016 with Uzolisa, and when yeah. we met. This guy has always been loving, to be honest with you. You have always been consistent when it comes to love from day one, like oko oko oko. But I would say, like, you have changed a lot. A lot of things, the way you see life, or the way you see relationships, you have changed like a lot. A lot. This is the new Zolisa compared to the person that I met. Uh, four years ago. I mean, I'm a commitment phobe, and Zolisa at that time, he was a gamophobic. Like, he was scared of commitment. He didn't want anything that has to do with marriage, and not because he didn't want to, but because he was just scared because of the uh, past life experiences. I mean, Growing up, he didn't have like a smooth uh, childhood. Yeah, the, 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 your childhood. I mean, for people who have read your book, they, they know and understand um, what type of childhood you had. So, I mean, these are the things that have affected you to end up not wanting yeah. to have like a serious relationship where you'll be committed with one person. So just, just tell me, Baby, um, like before you met me, in fact, tell me how did you feel about the like the relationship? You know, baby, um, man, you 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 are right when you say a lot of things have changed in my life. Yeah, and I have the awareness that I have changed. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I see life, the way I see relationships. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always like that, mm. you know. 
I had a horrible childhood experiences as you've already explained mm. and my childhood traumas influenced me to really less desire any type of relationships mm. friendships romantic relationships you know mm. um i remember there was a point in my life where i convinced myself that i wanted to die as a loner mm. you know i convinced myself that i never wanted to have children i never wanted to be married or mm. to be committed Mm. to any woman mm. and i don't think at that time i had a conscious awareness mm. of the hardness of my heart or the understanding of how my upbringing influenced me i really don't think i had this awareness that i have right now back then mm. you know mm. but I do remember uh some of my past exes exes you know get it exes i but let's just, let's just be honest you don't have exes baby oh, no. exes oh, no. you don't even have one ex just say just say people that you were like playing with budlali means love yeah so i do remember some of them telling me that i was emotionally unavailable mm, mm. and i didn't know at that time what that statement meant mm. i didn't even care that much to investigate what could they possibly mean mm. when they would assert that i was emotionally unavailable but obviously i was curious or rather bothered by the fact that all my relationship ended so abruptly I mean before I met you the longest relationship I've been into was for one year mm-hmm. and then it was 6 months and then it was 3 months and then it was one week and then it was a day <laughs> a day that's not a relationship <laughs> you know so and and all these women were saying exactly the same thing that Zorisa you are emotionally unavailable mm-hmm. you just shut me off with no uh reasonable reasons mm. you know so that's something that really made me curious mm. and before i met you i was single for four years because i was just tired of being in and out of these relationships mm. and in my childish way of thinking back then I blamed everything to all my exes. I was like, you know, these women were just crazy. I don't have anything wrong mm. with me. Mm. It's them was mm. the problem. Mm. But um I'm so grateful that I had a privilege opportunity to go for counseling mm. in my early 20s. I don't remember how many counseling sessions I've been to before I met you, but I think it's not less than 3. Mm. You know, so mm. those sessions they taught me a lot about myself mm. and that is what really helped me to understand the damage mm. Mm. you know that was caused by my upbringing but i don't even think my understanding of the the consequences of my upbringing were was was that deeper if you know what i mean i don't think i had a concrete understanding that i have today as far as how my my background or my upbringing had influenced me and so prior before meeting you i was working on some of the things that the counselors pointed out and the journey wasn't diff- wasn't easy it was very difficult mm. very 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 difficult so you met me at a time in my life where i wasn't interested mm. in finding a woman mm. i wasn't really sure if i wanted a woman mm. you you sort of like you took me by surprise mm. and then you fell in love and you were like what do i do now <laughs> because i i i remember baby that um 
like even when when we talk about e and just depending on and you'll be like no i, I don't want to have kids and no that that really bothered me a lot because i was like i'm someone who wants to have a family one day and i'm i'm not here to just fool around i'm a person who always want, wants to commit with someone and build something together you know so when you say those things it would just like kind of affect me emotionally because i'm like okay we are two people who love each other but we are in we're not thinking the same thing you know we're not we're not we're not um we're not seeing like uh the same future of having a family together you know but i think um a lot of people i i understand because for me i was like let me just be patient with you because i can see that you you are a loving person and you want to build something but it's just that you are scared so you you kind of holding yourself back you know you're trying to protect yourself because you don't want you don't want to be disappointed you don't want to be hurt so i was i was very patient with you like i was very patient with you because i could see something in you i can tell that also lisa can actually be this person but it's just that whatever uh, life experiences that you've been through these or as that are buckling you up to this person that you are you know so um being patient to you actually really I, I never i've never done anything to say i have changed your mind you're the one who just decided to change like you're the one who started talking about marriage you're the one who started talking about kids and the thing is even though you didn't want to have kids i could see like when you're working at the mall you always playing with kids all the time like kids are your best friends and you always get along with kids you know so those are the kind of things that i could see and i was like i kind of understand what he's been through and i could see that you are trying to work on yourself so i was like let me be patient i'm not going to change the way utinga nga khona tisakuyeka and that yeka sana zam and i think another thing is you you kind of feel safe around me I think like safety is very important. The more you feel safe around that person, the more you become um open to them and yeah. you not afraid to be vulnerable in front of them, you know? So, as time goes by, within like like few months of dating you, you you were just like pouring the problems that you had like previously you know you were not afraid to cry in front of me you were not afraid to just speak about everything about ifemeliako your childhood memories and what you've been through and what you were current what you were currently going through at that moment because i met you at a time when you were going through a lot with ifemeliako so you know like yeah I think in Jay I was just like being patient with you and I was like this guy he will come around shame I could see he's a good guy and I'm just going to be patient with him so I think these things like each childhood um experiences they do affect amanda manins you know not just guys only but even like amanda mazana that's why people end up being scared of being in a, a serious relationship because they they are scared to be hurt and they are scared to be disappointed so they don't want to open up umtu uyangena but hold himself or herself back you know yeah you know i just love everything that you said in there because really it is the truth about my journey mm. i'm pretty sure you were surprised when you saw my heart melting away you know mm one day at a time or one experience at a time and i try to even today think at a deeper level about maybe what what caused my heart to melt mm. because what would initially happen when i would meet a woman is i would be excited in the beginning mm. but as the relationship progresses my mental condition would kick in mm. 
I would be anxious mm. because I would see the direction of a relationship mm. and automatically my heart would close the doors immediately. Mm. And that's what that's what exactly happened mm. to you in the beginning and I'm pretty sure you would still remember that. I think there were two or three instances whereby I sort of like asked you to walk away from me. Do you still remember that? Mm. Mm. I remember. I think I think we had a so, disagreement this one time and it was like a small thing and you just you were like you know what uh, maybe it's 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 better if we just like uh, separate on. yeah because I can tell that we are not ready for each other and I was like but who this guy what is wrong with him <laughs> and the, the thing is at that time you were so impatient and these are the things that you have learned along the way to be more patient you you had anger issues you you just had a lot a lot going on at that time so yeah some people they don't have patience you know they could just walk away and be like i cannot tolerate this but you know because i i could tell i could tell the the heart that we had at that time and i was like no you know what i'll just give him some time you know he, he 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 will definitely come around because i can see that there is something that is bothering um him and the thing is um when, when you when you said some some sometimes people don't don't like they don't they, they don't see the problem that you have and but very back thing about oh lendo the injunction yeah but the problem is, baby, some people, they, they're not willing to open up about their problems. That's where the problem starts, yeah, bo? So, if you are able to open up about your problems, then that person will try and meet you halfway. And for me, I think that was um, one thing that made me to be more patient with you because you have never closed up with what was going on um, at that time in your life. You just open up about everything so i i understood the anger that was where it was coming from the impatience where it was coming from and why you were like that hard at that time so i was like it's fine i'm just gonna be patient because well i'm, I'm a very patient person you know so it's more difficult when someone is just not sharing and you know you're trying you're trying by all means you're trying to meet them halfway but they're not meeting halfway unfortunately that is not gonna work so people they they have to be open if you're willing to build build something with someone you have to be open about everything so that you guys understand each other and that will build a, a relationship between you two to to share something as of a strong and as I found this event on a bed. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And honestly speaking, baby, when you met me, I wasn't ready to be in a relationship. Mm. That year, falling in love with a woman was not part of my plans. Mm. Because I have somehow, you know, come into the realization that, that there were a lot of issues in my life that mm. I hadn't dealt with mm. and I met some 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 of the best psychologists in the country mm. who some were not uh, uh, some were not really that much thoughtful in being honest mm. they were brutally honest with me they told me right on the spot that my relationships would fail if I don't deal with these issues mm. so when I met you I knew what you were looking for. Mm. I knew the direction you were taking me into. Mm. And my mental condition kicked in immediately. Mm. As a result, the doors of my heart closed itself towards you automatically. And that is why I would pick you on small things because I could see that you were a good person, but I never wanted to to break your heart mm. because at that time there was a bit of information that I was learning from my counseling sessions. So I have grown to understand that the emotions of women are not something to toy around with. So 
in my mind i was like okay you know what i want you know to be the one who initiates the breakup mm. not me mm. you know so that is why when we would argue about small things i would i would sort of like be psychologically manipulative and tell you that maybe it's time for us to break up break up because we are not ready for each other mm. you know mm. and really that was the fear in me because i felt like dinao was asking me to do something that i have no idea what to do mm. we're asking me to be a loving man not verbally but by your actions mm. you know mm. and i felt like my goodness how am i going to be able to do that mm. you know it felt just to tell somebody i love you it felt so so strange and so wrong it felt unusual mm-hmm. you know and the other thing that most women i think don't grasp about us men we are not raised to open up our emotions mm-hmm. to talk about the things that bothers us that's something i learned at 25 and all my counseling sessions were so difficult my good lord it was just difficult to 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 open up even when i had selected to have a male psychologist sometimes i would switch them around mm. but it was very difficult the most difficult work i've ever done in my life is to open up about my struggles mm. yo that's the most difficult thing you know mm-hmm. so but that that's why i often say the way we met it feels to me like it was a well orchestrated plan i feel like i met you in my life at a time whereby i needed you the most mm-hmm. because i think it took your presence to melt my heart and i just don't know because every time i would look at you i felt within myself that this woman really deserves something better mm. you know i felt like i could try maybe to be someone better for you mm. even though i was nervous in the beginning and i guess the more i could see the beauty of your heart the more i felt the responsibility to try hard as i can to be the best partner for you mm-hmm. and that is why on a daily basis the idea of being committed to you it became less frightening mm-hmm. and all so i actually want to ask you this mm-hmm. sorry you can go on No, I was I was going to say and honestly as time goes by you 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 change drastically like everything about you just change the way your heart just melted like I was in over hey wow like you just change like you change. and no one forced you to change but it just happened automatically in lela over lo watching jangayo and the idea of having a family the idea of getting married like sometimes <laughs> when you said he would send me voice notes and tell me but your baby when you get pregnant this is a present from day one to funu to ut ozukya lento na len and in my mind i'm just like look at this guy he's planning my pregnancy already <laughs> And this is the person who didn't want to have kids at first but go he's just planning the whole pregnancy so yeah i think going for help um really helped you it really helped you that's why sometimes it's important for people to go for counseling you know because it does help it's yeah. not like one session is going to help but it does help a lot yeah. and it does help a lot babe especially when you are willing to endure and be patient with the process mm-hmm. however though i met some psychologists who were honest with uh, w- enough with me some psychologists i met they told me up front that listen reason or explanation 
can take you so far. Mm. There are some places whereby counseling will not be able to go into. That means you're going to have to rely on your faith. Mm. Your faith will be a motto or a vehicle that will help you cross other treacherous waters that were difficult for you in your life. Mm. So that is why for me personally, I strongly believe in the existence of God mm. because I think my journey is a strong evidence that we live in a world that was designed by a personal God who has an interest in us. Mm. I don't think on my own it would have been possible for me to change myself, you know, so I think all the changes that we're talking about, I would want to credit all these changes to God. I think God was the one who was orchestrating mm. or mm. weaving together all these events so that I could be healed and be cured, mm. you know. Mm. And, and in as much as I'm not condoning the behavior of man, but I do understand what makes a lot of men slip around? Mm. I'm not saying I condone that, but I'm saying I understand what makes them or what drives them to make these decisions. And bear in mind, bear in mind that this whole journey, I had to do it all by myself. Mm. No mentor, no guidance, no shoulder to lean on. Mm. And it wasn't an easy process. It is very difficult. It's excruciatingly painful. Mm -hmm. It's painful, you know. So that's why for me, I say I really understand, you know, a lot of men because when you dig deeper in the well of their upbringing, you will understand why these men, they act the way that they do. And I'm not saying I am condoning it. Mm. And I guess that explains why I really don't like to be complimented on the basis of my looks. Because I'm like, man, I wish you could just listen where I'm coming from. Mm. You know, because I think to me, what best explains who I am is my story more than my looks. Mm. And that's why, baby, I always say in most of our videos, Looks don't mean a thing. Mm. That is why I always say to women, your primary goal cannot be you looking for a tall man who has a large penis. Now, those things won't take you anywhere. <laughs> you know? Because somebody, I think at that time, somebody who saw us walking at the mall or wherever, I'm pretty sure they were saying, oh, look at this cute couple. <laughs> but on the inside, you were broken. On the inside, we were broken. And I sort of like brought you into my brokenness. Mm. Mm. Ah, shame, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know any better. If I knew then what I know now, surely I would have done better. Mm. Mm. So I want to ask you this question. Mm. What piece of advice would you give to a woman who's dating or married to a man who was, who is exactly like I was back then. Oh, you know what? My advice, honestly speaking, my advice, it, it, it would be, and before I could say this, baby, it depends again, how that person is treating you. As much as ba, you were that kind of person, you were still treating me in the right, you know? So sometimes, some people, the way they treat you and the way they behave towards you, besides the fact that they still have this problem, this already, the way corner, it's affecting you, yeah, bo? So you just have to dig deep and try try by all means talk to your partner sit down and 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 try and make him or her open up but if they're not willing 
obviously you will offer help but if you don't want to talk to me because i can see that you have a problem if you don't want to talk to me let's go for help let's go see someone try and talk to someone because honestly speaking these childhood experiences are they are they are affecting us a lot a lot baby we are living in a broken world because of the way we grew up people are so cold towards other people because of the way bakulenga corner so in cases a band does it look cool is it beta you know so try and talk to this person because this is the person that you are spending your life with so if this is affecting you emotionally no it, it something has to be done and if there is no improvement to get well the decision is your it's, it's in your own hands you know what to do you know no one is going to tell you what to do but you know the most important thing is your happiness your wellness and your mental health and if you are in a relationship whereby you are being affected by someone's life past experience and that is affecting you in a way that the bacteria and the wrong or then if he can't do any or she can't do anything what's the point you know you have to yeah. you have to do something about it yeah yeah mm. yeah absolutely beautifully said yeah anyway that's what we wanted to share <laughs> and this video is very long i don't even know how many minutes we have been recording this but this is something uh, we wanted to share so that people can can learn that sometimes um in relationships there are a lot of work to be honest with you but you have to work on something that is workable not something inga inga lungiyo you don't have to force matters i mean even as i as i've explained before if for me you were not open about anything or been born by you are just being cold and lonely and yeah, they affected towards me then i was gonna leave you know because it was still the early stages of a relationship what's this point of staying in a relationship uh, and build something with someone who's just not willing to to be in on the same page with you and be open for me openness is the most important thing in a relationship because if you can't be open and if you hide in things then what's the point of even committing to each other that's just my personal belief when it comes to relationships so the way you were you were treating me the way you were acting i was like i'm going to be patient because i can see the problem with you you know i was willing to be patient with you up until you find that comfort space to actually be open to me you know so yeah that's why we still yeah. here even today but gang wo guy today gang on government yay kaka kele so yeah we just wanted to share with this um oh, with you guys this um yeah. personal journey you know so yeah and i hope somebody will learn one or two lessons yeah and i think we have to be very careful we are not saying to women you should carry the burden that's what all i was on saying your mm. we are not saying you should carry the burden all on your shoulders mm. i did the hard work you know never forced me to go for a counseling mm. You know, never force me to do all the hard work I've done. You know, never force me to buy books and read about manhood. Mm. He never forced me to do all the all those things. Mm. But I needed his support system in order for me mm. to step out mm. and do it. Mm. You mm. know, so in as much as you're gonna be patient with him and be supportive. You cannot carry the 100% responsibility for him to change. Yeah. I think that's what we need to be careful because a lot of women they may actually hear you saying carry the responsibility for him to change. Na 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 na. That's no. not what we are saying. Mm. What we are saying is you need to meet each other halfway. Mm. Mm. I think if Dinao was judgmental, impatient and critical of me, our relationship would have never even stood a chance mm. to thrive mm. Mm. but because she was understanding she was willing to support me and 
I remember that day when we went to church at Hill Songs, mm. and they they the preacher preached a message that was exactly the situation I was going through. Mm. And when I heard those words, man, I broke down in front of I don't know how many people. Mm, I remember. And everyone, you lam la kanyi. I don't know who else was there. No, Ubongeka was not there. Ubongeka was not there. No, it was Ukanyi and Ulamla and me and you. And Ulam. Mm. And, and all of you guys began to cry with me. Mm. You know, so I think you never making me feel ashamed mm. as a man to mm. cry. Wow, man, I was like, yeah, I'm home. I'm home now. I'm mm. home. Mm. Time to let the guards fall. <laughs> so, so, ladies, please take note. We're not saying that you should carry the burden. But what we are saying is you have to be supportive. Considering that he's willing to come out and meet you halfway. Yeah. If he's not willing, I does meg. I meg. Yeah. Live. Ah, Live. <laughs> Leave, leave. <laughs> Send him a text now. Say it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, game does shit. I just suck because there's another guy waiting for you out there. But it's not that nonsense, guys. Yeah. Like, let's not yeah. take nonsense. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, baby, we need to close up this video, okay? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, thank you for this amazing topic. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Just remembering these things, man. Oh, wow. I'm so grateful to God. Grateful to you, mm. my beautiful angel. And you know how much I admire and appreciate you so much. Oh, and man. thank you even to you, my brothers and sisters for your time to listen to you know this dialogue i hope you will learn one or two things Booyah! bye baby bye lovey thank you so much guys mm. ah! <laughs>